So today we're going to be talking about work smarter, not harder. And my name is Sandra Jones, rehab director at Clark Lindsay Village. So let's see what, how we can work smarter. Um, so sometimes even the simplest tasks may seem daunting. So all of those things that we do throughout the day um, could be some of those tasks. And when you put them all together, that's a lot of work. So especially for people living with maybe some chronic illness or just coming home after hospitalization, their energy is already gone. So they may have some limited weakness or some weakness, um, some limited joint motion or compromised breathing, which causes decreased endurance throughout your day. As therapists, our focus is to teach individuals how to combat that fatigue uh, with some different techniques. Um, some of the methods that are widely used are energy conservation and work simplification techniques. So we'll go over some of those today to see how we can help you throughout your day. Conserve your energy for the important things in life. So keep calm and pace yourself is kind of the motto there. So we know that we have a lot of things to do throughout the day. So we prioritize what are those things that we need to do in order to pace ourselves to maybe get to the bottom of that list of things that could be done today or you maybe even tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> you can do this by planning ahead and organizing that schedule and then leave ample time to complete your task so you don't feel rushed into that next task of your day. Uh, for example, avoid early morning doctor's appointments as the pressure of getting up and getting dressed and ready can be a lot for some of us. Um, so giving yourself enough time to, to get through those morning tasks of breakfast, bathing, dressing, and then getting in the car and getting going. Um, to kind of decrease some of that stress. Uh, rather, try to get the first appointment following the staff's lunch break, as they won't be running behind on schedule yet. Uh, this gives you plenty of time in the morning to get everything done in time. So hopefully they're not running behind at lunchtime. All right, so what is energy conservation? Dealing with chronic illness or recent hospitalizations may lead to the experiencing of fatigue and weakness. Um, so you may have episodes of shortness of breath or maybe just some less energy throughout your days or throughout certain activities. Uh, learning how to conserve your energy helps you build your strength, helps build up your strength to take part of those daily activities that you would be doing for yourself. So when you learn how to conserve your energy, you can reduce the strain on your other organs. So your heart, your lungs, uh, help with some shortness of breath and maybe some pain. If you're having chronic pain in hips or knees, if you do things slower, you'll conserve some energy so that way you can get in bed at the end of the day and not be in so much pain. Uh, learning to conserve your energy is about finding that good balance between work and rest. And in life, we have to find those balances um, with a lot of different things. You know, you can't do too much of it because you'll overdo it, but you can't have, if you do not enough, then you'd maybe underdo it. So you're not, you have to find that happy medium there. All right, so we want to remember to practice the four P's. So number one of the four P's is to prioritize. Uh, decide what needs to be done today and what can be done at a later time or date. So some of those things that come to mind are, you know, eating. You have to cook maybe for, for some sustenance, maybe bathing or dressing. Those are things that you do on a daily basis. Um, going to the doctor or dusting the living room is the example that they provide for us here. So the dust will be there later. You can dust later, but going to the doctors is important. So getting ready and getting to that doctor's appointment. Uh, when you have more than one thing to do, we just have to figure out which one is the most important. 
So number one, prioritize. Number two is plan. Uh, so we want to plan our activities to avoid extra trips. Gather any supplies or equipment that you may need for doing the task that you're headed to do. For example, get your garden supplies and tools ready before you start to plant the flowers. So, you know, simple things. If, if you know you need three items out of the refrigerator, get them out and put them on the counter right next to the refrigerator and then move them over to your workstation. Um, <clears throat> so, so maybe some like laundry tasks. If you're gonna do laundry, and maybe for some of us here, we have to go down to the washer and dryer. We wanna take everything with us so we're not walking back and forth from your laundry room to the apartment. Um, <clears throat> so, and then plan those activities through the week. So if you know that you have a doctor's appointment today at 11 o'clock and that you usually do your laundry today, maybe we need to push our laundry off a day because you're going to be tired by the time you get back from the doctor. Um, <clears throat> so put a schedule on your refrigerator to remind you what those things are you're doing. So we don't go to the doctor every week. Maybe, you know, we usually go every few months. So on that week where you have that doctor's visit, you'll know to rearrange your schedule. And then plan to get a good rest each night. So if you look at your schedule on your refrigerator, then you know that tomorrow is laundry day and that you have to get a good start to your day in order to get through that load of laundry. Um, and then use your family and friends or pay for help to complete some of these tasks. Uh, if you struggle or, you know, you don't quite have the energy to do so. So, you know, leaning on those people that also care about you, they'll be able to help you through that day. All right, number three, pace. Maintain a slow and steady pace. So we're not in a race, we just need to take it slow. We don't wanna rush, like the example earlier, the dust will be there, even if you only get halfway through the living room, the dust will stay on the other side of the living room, we'll get to it. Uh, rest often. So, you know, laundry is a good example because you gotta get all your clothes there, get them in the washer. Once they're washing, then you'll get to take a break until you transfer them to the dryer. And then there's another bit of work there and then you can get them back home. Now you may not hurry and fold them and put them away. You may take another rest break and then complete that task. So laundry could be paced throughout the day and then at the end of the day, you'll be done with that task. Um, avoid holding your breath. So. Sometimes, you know, if we're working on something or really focusing on something, we tend to hold our breath in order to get through that task. Uh, so don't do that. Remember, breathing helps oxygenate the blood in our body and helps us get that energy in order for those muscles to work. Um, <clears throat> so, and then breathing slowly. So if you get to be out of breath, remember to take big deep breaths in and blow them all out, and then that will help regulate your breath if you are becoming tired, or take a rest break. Uh, remember that you may have to ask for help to do some of the tasks, and that's okay. Uh, so um, if you need to ask family members, or if you need to look into other resources, we can help with that as well. And then the one at the bottom there is listen to your body. Only you know those limits. If you feel short of breath, I may be able to see that a little bit, but you are the only one that knows I need to sit and take a break. If your foot is starting to hurt, I may see a little bit of a limp, but you are the only one that knows it. Okay, I've done enough. My ankle won't take it anymore. I need to sit and rest. So that is always listen to your body. 
Number four is position. So too much bending or reaching can cause fatigue and shortness of breath. Uh, use a reacher, a sock aid, a long handled shoehorn or elastic shoelaces to avoid continuous bending to do lower body dressing. Um, and we will attach a video at the end to kind of show you how to use some of that equipment. Uh, avoid bending and reaching too much. So the repetitive motions, if you continue to do so, could cause you to wear out quicker because you're using a lot of muscles to do that. And then avoid reaching too far. So if you're doing a task here, but you keep reaching over here to grab something, it may be too much. It may be worth moving over a little bit, grab all that stuff and move it over here. That way you can stand still and complete the task here. Um, always maintain a nice upright posture when sitting and standing. This helps you get more oxygen into your lungs and around your body to work better. So we kind of touched base a little bit there. If, if you become short of breath and you're taking very shallow breaths, taking a big deeper breath and holding your posture up to allow those lungs to expand will help you get more oxygen to get more energy for your muscles. And then sit when you can. So that's part of that conserving energy. If I'm going to stand here and fix a meal or fold laundry, I'm wasting energy in my lower body. If I sat and did it, then I can conserve some energy there. Uh, and sitting reduces energy by 25%. So help reload that energy bank by sitting for a little bit. All right, so those were our four P's for conserving energy. Um, number one, prioritize. Number two, plan. Number three, oh, uh, pace yourself. Um, and then positioning is not on this here, but positioning was number four. So prioritize activities for the day. Do heavier tasks when you have more energy. Typically that could be first thing in the morning, maybe after you've rested after lunch or after another meal. Uh, plan your days and weeks of activity. So that goes back to that schedule, kind of keeping a schedule of what your weekly tasks are. And set up your work area so you don't have to move around a lot uh, or look for items. So if there's a favorite place in, at home that you like to sit and do some of those tasks, making sure that that area is always clear so you can bring whatever task you're working on there and sit. And then plan rest times. That's important. We can't just keep go, go, go. We have to rest. Um, so we see patients here at Clark Lindsay who have come from the hospital and I always tell them that part of their rehab stay is resting. That if we go, go, go seven days a week of therapy all the time, that doesn't allow their bodies to rest and heal. So resting is very important as well. Uh, and then pace yourself. Do not try to complete the whole task in one session. I know I'm guilty of if I just get one more step done, then it's less to do. But if we don't have the energy to do that, one more step, then we'll let it sit and we're going to come back to it. So breaking it into smaller steps or smaller goals for yourself. Uh, a good guide to follow is to take 10 minutes each hour to rest. So, um, you know, whatever 10 minutes of that 60 minutes that you just tell yourself, I got to rest a little bit so I can keep going through my daily schedule. All right, and again, do not rush. We'll get to it as we go. Uh, position and posture are important. Sit to work when you can. And then sit and stand up as straight as you can. So posture, stretching those lungs out. Practice that deep breathing. And then kind of watch your breathing rate. Are you breathing fast and shallow? Are we taking those big, long, deep breaths? 
Um, and then use assistive devices. So assistive devices are walkers, canes, wheelchairs, whatever would help you kind of get through your day. Um, walkers and canes help us if, if we need just a little bit of help to get from point A to point B. Um, and we can help you with that in the therapy department to determine which one is best for you. And you may need different devices. You may need a cane to get around your apartment, but a walker to get around in the community. Um, and that will help kind of save some of that energy in the apartment where you're just going into small spaces, then you could set it down and stand at the counter. Uh, for instance, here at Clark Lindsay, we have long hallways. So if you're walking to go check your mail at the front desk, then you would use your walker because then you could use both arms to get there and res uh, conserve some energy. Remember, the most important energy conservation tip is to listen to your body. So those muscles will start to tell you when you're getting weak or you need a rest. Uh, stop and rest before you get tired. So if you wait till you're tired and can't do any more, then it's gonna take a lot longer to refill that energy bank. Uh, so just kind of rest often. All right, work simplification. So there's two terms we've used so far, energy conservation and work simplification. So now we're going to figure out how to simplify those tasks throughout our day. Um, so it says sit wisely, prioritize, and delegate. The principles of work simplification include sitting, to work as much as possible. So we already learned that that helps conserve our energy by 25% as well. When you're sitting, choose a firm surface with armrest, soft couches and chairs, although tempting, are hard to get out of. So then we use a lot of energy to get out of those and it's not as simple as sitting on a, a harder chair with good support. Uh, organize work areas so the bulk of your activity occurs at waist height and close to your body. So the further you have to reach, you're straining on those muscles to do your activity. And of course, sitting and keeping those things close is also best. So avoid bending and overreaching or even stooping over. Because when we stoop over, that compresses on our lungs and then we're not able to take deep breaths. Uh, instead of lifting heavy objects, slide them along. So if they're on the floor, not necessarily push and slide them on the floor, but if you can get them up to counter height and then push them, instead of carrying them, that will help. Um, avoid strenuous arm motions. So um, anything that you have to do, a lot of reaching to do, um, some of our cupboards are kind of high. I always say don't keep to simplify your work. Don't keep the things that you use the most high. Kind of keep them at counter level or maybe at the very first shelf. Um, <clears throat> and if you must pick up objects, bend your knees or squat rather than your back. So if you've ever heard that before, we have to use our strong leg muscles to lift something up instead of our back. All right, so here with work simplification, we also want to prioritize, prioritize important tasks and delegate to others what maybe doesn't take priority. And then remember to save your energy for things you most want to do. So if there's something fun on the activity schedule or something fun planned, maybe a birthday party or a dinner or a gathering, you want to save your energy so you can do those fun things with your family and friends. And then get to know your own activity tolerance and stop if you feel symptoms of fatigue, such as muscle stiffness, weakness, and shortness of breath. So <clears throat> you usually have an idea of in your home, can I get back and forth to, you know, the bedroom or the bathroom? multiple times a day, or for instance here at Clark Lindsay, if I live on a wing far away and I'm trying to get to the center, 
where that, that rest place is uh, to sit and take a break to get you to that next task. And then the work simplification five-step plan is to number one, select that job or activity to be improved. And this is the task that takes too long, makes you tired or requires too much exertion. So then what is that task? Does anyone, if you have that task of like, this task always makes me tired. I know I have to get it done, but how am I going to simplify it? So you can start thinking about what that might be for yourself. Number two, review that job and activity and what equipment you need for that job. So why is that job necessary? It could be laundry and well, we need clean clothes, or it could be I need to organize my pantry. Is that something we need to do? Sure, but could it be pushed off or could you, you know, have your family come and help you with that or a friend? Uh, what is the purpose? So if doing laundry is to have clean clothes, then well, that's a necessary task. If rearranging your pantry by color is just something you want to do because you want it to look pretty, then maybe we can prioritize getting the stuff at maybe waste level that you use a lot in the pantry. And then when should it be done? Is it something that needs to be done, like laundry needs to be done today because I don't have any more clothes to wear? Or back to the pantry, is it just because I'm doing some spring cleaning, I want to rotate stock? Um, and then how is the best way for me to do it? Should I do two loads of laundry today or should I do two loads of laundry and spread them throughout the week? Or with the pantry situation, there's five shelves in the pantry. Do I do them all today or should I pick two shelves a day? So there's a lot of ways to kind of prioritize that one specific job. And there are a lot of tasks throughout the day. I just used two examples. Number three would be breakdown of the details of accomplishing that job or task. So what do you need to do to get ready? Tools, equipment, so laundry, you would need, you know, your detergent, um, maybe a cart to get your laundry there. Uh, with the pantry, do you need a big trash can close to kind of get rid of anything that has expired, anything that you don't need? Uh, what body motions are necessary to accomplish this job or activity? So with laundry and pantry, a lot of that is in standing, but could you also get a stool or a chair close so you could do some of that? <clears throat> um, what needs to be cleaned up and put away? So a laundry task is usually done on a weekly basis or a more routine. You kind of have a process for that. Cleaning up the pantry is probably something that you don't do very often. So making up a process for that. Uh, if we're going to have a big trash can to, to clean out the pantry, we're going to need some help getting that out of here. And number four, develop a new method. So uh, eliminate unnecessary details. So if there is maybe something with your laundry process and kind of changing that up a little bit. Uh, with the pantry, maybe doing one shelf at a time, you know, throughout the month. That way each shelf stays clean and you're not having to do it all at once. Uh, combined motions and activities. Uh, so most washers are still either top load. So everything is here. So bring your, bring your basket up to that level. So you're just kind of moving at waist level close to your body instead of the bending. Uh, <clears throat> and with the pantry, so the combined motions and activities, kind of stick into one shelf. You don't want to get rid of everything with a, a glass or everything that's in a can if they're not all on the same shelf. So do one shelf at a time. 
uh, rearrange the sequence of the job or activity. So just depending on what your goal is and how to prioritize that safety and that work simplification. And then simplify all necessary details. If there is a plan, make sure that that plan is in place so you can kind of follow that and not run into a little bump in the road here and there. And number five, apply the new method and ask for help if possible. Rearrange tools and equipment to make sure that your new method runs nice and smooth. Uh, readjust working heights and areas. So that may require, you know, for another task that's not laundry and uh, rearranging your pantry, maybe just rearranging your, your living space, your bedroom, your bathroom, could be your kitchen. Um, so occupational therapists can help you with that and kind of do some work simplification and how to rearrange your space in order to be more successful. Um, <clears throat> and then maybe setting up a workstation. Maybe you don't quite have one yet. And then discard any items that you do not use. <coughs> so when you're cleaning out your pantry, you'll find those things that you don't use as much. <clears throat> All right. So in summary, balancing rest and activity when recovering from an injury or illness or coping with a chronic illness is very important. So saving that energy in that bank that we talked about um, is also called energy conservation. So we want to conserve as much as we can to get through and accomplish our everyday tasks. Uh, you may need to change how and when you do those tasks and what order you put them in throughout your day and put that unrealistic work um, so you don't have to make your body work so hard. Uh, the way you do a job is as important as what you do. So <clears throat> if that, again, that's a priority, then we want to focus on that. And then remember to plan, prioritize, pace, and use the correct position when doing each task. So those four Ps will really help you through that. If you need some help on how to prioritize and work through those four Ps with your different tasks that you do throughout the day, always um, feel free to reach out. <coughs> All right, and we do have a handout. So let me pull that handout up and then you guys can look at it. So in our handout here, we're talking about uh, work simplification and energy conservation techniques. So work simplification is the process of developing methods and performing daily activities in order to conserve energy and simplify work. It involves doing a task or series of tasks in planned orderly ways so that wasted body motions are reduced to a minimum. So kind of just reviewing a lot of the things in our slides plan your activities, prioritize and get organized, pace yourself and take your time, and maintain proper posture. So those are the four P's that we reviewed already. And then they have little bullet points there to kind of remind you what, how to do those four P's. And then ways to incorporate work simplification and energy conservation techniques into your daily self-care tasks. <clears throat> So we have self-cares, bathing is one of those. So gather your materials, have your materials close to the tub, sit on the tub bench, uh, use a handheld shower head, and allow time for bathing. So everybody's bathroom setup is a little different, but like we learned in our PowerPoint, that sitting saves 25% of our energy. So sitting in the shower still gets you a shower, and you're saving energy while you're showering. So <clears throat> that tub bench, um, if you don't have a bench or a seat, uh, we can help you find which one would be best for you. And then the other one here is that handheld shower head. I know I have a handheld shower head and 
although I do not sit during my bath at home, it had come in very helpful when I was washing my son uh, in his bath. So if you guys don't have one, they attach very easily. Um, they just replace your regular shower head and there's even some that attach at the faucet where the water comes out. <clears throat> All right. The next self-care task here is upper body dressing. So how to put on your clothes. We've been doing that for years, right? You've been putting on your clothes since you were a kid. But if we follow a couple steps, we could save some energy while doing that. So we want to gather all of your clothes and maybe any dressing equipment that you might have. And then make sure that they're in easy reach. So that way you're sitting, saving that energy and getting dressed at the same time. Um, if you have trouble with buttons or zippers, uh, there's different little techniques that we can teach you. There's little equipment. Uh, there's a button hook that's about the size of this little thing, and it helps you button your shirt. So if you're interested in seeing that, uh, let us know and we can help you with that. Uh, it is best to wear loose, comfortable clothes uh, for safety and cons to conserve energy sit while you dress and undress. So if, if sitting on the bed is a place that works for you or maybe having a chair close to the bathroom or your bed would help. Uh, be sure to follow any surgical or medical precautions if your doctor or therapist have for you. Um, and then always dress an affected side or a weaker side first. So that's for upper body, but it works for both upper and lower body. So if, let's say we have arthritis in both of our shoulders, but this shoulder can go up this way and this shoulder can only go up here, we want to dress this side first because this arm has more mobility. <clears throat> um, before you put on your shirt or blouse or jacket, is there any buttons that you can put on and button first instead of doing it afterwards? So, you know, maybe button up your shirt halfway put it on like a pullover and then just button the top two buttons. Um, <clears throat> all right, and then how to take off your clothes. So we want to do the reverse in getting undressed. So if this arm has less mobility and this arm has more mobility, I want to take this one off first and this one off last. Um, <clears throat> and then we move into lower body dressing, how to put on clothes. So again, you want to lay all those clothes that you need for your lower body out. We want to sit and we want to use a reacher. I don't know if you guys can see that, but here in this picture, he's using a reacher. And like I said, we'll uh, uh, attach a video on how to use that adaptive equipment. So you want to lower the garment to the floor and then first slip in the foot that is weaker. So um, if you have less mobility in your left knee, then we want to put that one in first or hip. Uh, more mobility, we want to put that one in last because it moves a little easier for us. So you can use a reacher or you can use your hands to pull those clothes up. Um, and then again with the zipper, sit down to button or zip if you can or if you get those looser fitting clothes, then maybe it just has elastic and there's no button and zippers. All right, another self-care task is meal preparation. So we have to, you know, keep our nutrition up. So sometimes that means making a little snack or a meal for ourselves. Uh, store frequently used items in the most accessible locations. So we touched based on that just a little bit, you know, in your cupboard, you don't want to keep those things way at the top if you use them all the time. We want to keep them close. Or same thing with the refrigerator. The, the milk and you know those things that you reach for all the time, kind of just keep them close range. Um, coffee, coffee pots, coffee mugs, keep those close. Um, kind of put different things in different areas if you have baking ingredients, because you want to like to make Christmas cookies, but you don't make cookies at any other time of the year, then these can kind of stay in a, 
and an area on their own. Uh, <clears throat> frequently used food items, we talked about that. And then, I don't know if any of you guys have any type of mixers, uh, so use a mixer instead of a spoon. And if sometimes that stays on your countertop as well. Um, <clears throat> slide items along countertops instead of carrying them. Uh, use a reacher that you put your pants on with. You can still use that to get uh, something out of the cupboard or something in the cabinet below. Uh, and then use a walker cart or maybe those four-wheeled walkers that have a seat because then you're able to kind of move things from place to place. Um, <clears throat> this one is always a go-to for us in the therapy world is to remove any throw rugs or anything that you have lying on the ground that doesn't allow you to move smoothly, whether you use an assistive device with wheels or just you don't use anything. We don't want to trip on that with our toes. Um, <clears throat> in the kitchen, you can use some rubber openers if you need help opening jars. Uh, those are always pretty handy. If not, we can get you one. Um, <clears throat> electric opener, can openers, if opening a can is, is difficult. Uh, housekeeping techniques, use items, or use cleaning items in the room and kind of leave them there. Uh, take frequent rest breaks, sit to clean when possible. Um, if those are any of the cleaning things that you do. Um, and then another way to um, save some energy is that we talked about breathing a little bit, but pursed lipped breathing is the best way to control that breathing when you become short of breath. So um, <clears throat> with masks on, you can't necessarily see my mouth, but I'll give you a little direction. So we want to take a deep breath in through our nose, like we're smelling roses. And then we want to blow out through our lips like we're using a straw to blow. So if we use that technique, it helps us, helps us um, control that breathing by moving it in and out slowly and in through your nose, out through your mouth. And then there's a couple, uh, you know, directions there. That way you can do this when you get home or you can do it later. Uh, when should you use this technique? So use the technique during a difficult part of any activity such as bending, lifting, climbing stairs. And then you can always practice for four to five times a day to just continue working on a good breathing pattern. So here's a little picture of what I just described to you. So we want to relax your neck and shoulder muscles. We want to breathe in, inhale through your nose for two counts, keeping your mouth closed. Do not take a deep breath, just a normal breath. And then we want to pucker our lips and blow out, kind of like you're whistling or blowing out a candle. And then just nice and slow in and out and out those steps. All right. Anybody have any questions on anything with energy conservation or work simplification? Okay. Good. So lots of tips and tasks uh, that you can help through, to get through your tasks uh, throughout your day. And like I said, everybody's tasks are different. So if you do need some help just kind of working through those, uh, reach out to us here at Clark Lindsay in the therapy department. We're happy to help you problem solve through those tasks and figure out how to keep more energy in your energy bank. And stay tuned as we will show you how to use uh, the adaptive equipment to help simplify with some of your daily dressing tasks. Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm going to be teaching you how to use a sock aid today. So what you can do is put the sock aid on your lap and have your sock 
and you're going to slide your sock over the entire sock aid and scrunch it all the way down so that the toes are flat here. When that is on, you're going to put this on the floor and hold the handles and then slide your foot into the sock aid and then pull up to put your sock on. And when you're ready to take them off, you can use a reacher and you can use the end of it to bring your sock down and loosen it and then grab the toe part with the reacher, pull it off, and then you've removed your sock. My name is Rachel and I'm gonna be teaching you how to use the long handled shoehorn today. So first, you're gonna put the flat end in the back of your shoe. You're gonna put the front part of your foot in your shoe and then you're gonna pull back on this flat edge and slide your heel down the metal part. Once you get your foot in there, you just slide the shoehorn out and then you're ready to go. Hi, my name is Alexandra and today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to use the dressing stick. If you're wearing a sweater, you wanna grab one end of the sweater like so Put your arm through it and make sure the top is secured on your shoulder. You wanna grab your dressing stick with the hooked part on top, reach it to the back, push it all the way to the other side. With your other arm, grab the bottom of your sweater and then you wanna take the hook of the dressing stick and put it over your arm to help you bring your cardigan or sweater over your shoulder as so and then you just put your arm through the sleeve. And that's it. Hi, my name is Alexandra and today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to use the reacher. The reacher should be as so, with the lever closest to you and the orange part, the clamp, furthest away from you. To open and close the clamp, you wanna squeeze the lever at the bottom like so. If I wanna reach this cup, all I have to do is align it to the base, squeeze the lever, bring it towards me, and I can grab the cup. If I wanna pick something from the floor, I do the same thing. I wanna squeeze the lever, bring it up towards me, and grab the object, and that's it. 